What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 overview. This time we're taking a look at the new version of Gold Hen version 2.2.4, which was just released today by Sistro. Now Sistro did previously release version 2.2.3 only yesterday. However, that did have a few bugs, uh, which has now been fixed here in the latest version, which is why we now have version 2.2.4. So I'm gonna be taking a look at all the new features that have been added in this new version comparing them to the previous version, the main previous version we've had before, which is 2.2.2, as well as the beta versions that we've had access to for a while now. So let's go ahead and check this out. So firstly, we're going to load up Gold Hen by heading into the internet browser, going to our exploit page. I'm currently using my Raspberry Pi 02W to load Gold Hen, which has the auto USB inject. So as you can see right there, Gold Hen version 2.2.4 has successfully been loaded. Now, of course, you can use the normal exploit hosts by the time you're watching this video. They should have all been updated to include version 2.2.4. At the time of recording, Chameleon's host is one of the first ones to actually add it. So if you go to Chameleon's host, go to full manual Chameleon, you'll find that his host here does have version 2.2.4 added. And I'm sure caro218.ir will probably have version 2.2.4 included soon. Of course, if the exploit host does not seem to change after a while, and you can't seem to get 2.2.4, then make sure you press the options button, go to settings and clear your website data and your cookies in order to remove any cached versions so that you can get the latest version running on your console. That way you'll get the latest payloads. All right, so let's take a look at some of the new stuff that has been added right here. So firstly, we have, of course, the Gold Hen Quick Access menu. This was included in the beta, but wasn't available in the previous version of Gold Hen. So we now have quick access to the Gold Hen settings. Of course, you can still access the Gold Hen settings by heading into the normal settings menu and having Gold Hen here at the top. So that is also still there, but you now have quick access to it here in the function menu. So as you can see here, the menu system is being completely redesigned. But if we head into the about section and go to about Gold Hen, we can see some of the changes that have been made. So you can see here, the difference from version 2.2.3 to 2.2.4 is that he's fixed a K-Log TTY redirect issue. So another thing that has been fixed though is that there was a big issue back in version 2.2.3 where the Apollo save tool and the Gold Hen Cheats Manager was not working correctly. So when you tried to run one of these applications, what would happen is you would just get a black screen for a really long time. So this would pop up and then it would just be on a black screen for probably 10 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that before it would eventually load the homebrew app. And another issue is that whenever you selected something like USB saves uh, in the Apollo save tool or on the Gold Hen Sheet Manager, if you selected the update option, it would just freeze the whole application. Whereas now you can see it's not freezing the application when I select that option. So those issues appear to have been fixed here in version 2.2.4. And I believe there were also some other crashing issues uh, that people were reporting on 2.2.3. So I assume that that has now been fixed as well in the latest version. So those are kind of the main changes there between the two versions. So now let's take a look at some of the differences that have been added in the latest version here. So we do have the debug settings. So there's a debug settings setting that's now been added. We also have the cheat settings and K-Log settings. We've got the Gold Hen shortcut, the PS2 cheat support, Southbridge info, an improved app version detection, and refactored Gold Hen menu. So quite a few options here that have been added in this latest version. So let's take a look at some of those. So the debug settings, as you can see here, we have the package installer, which is now inside this debug settings menu. And then we have the enable debug settings option. Now this is actually set to off by default, uh, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, so if you go into the settings, you can see that there is no debug settings now uh, in the settings menu. And this is the default behavior when you first load version 2.2.4 or 2.2.3. So I do like the fact that you can turn off the debug settings. You have the option to have it on or off, especially if you have other people that use your PS4 who might mess around with the debug settings and you know enable something they shouldn't because messing around with the debug settings can cause problems with the system or kind of break your PS4. So I can understand having the ability to turn it off. I just don't think it should be off by default because then to enable it, you have to add 
an extra step of going into that menu and enabling it. And the problem with that is that it's just been the default behavior when loading hen or gold hen for the longest time going way back on previous firmwares, 5.05, 4.55, 4.05 firmware even, all the way back to 2017, whenever you loaded hen, the debug settings were always enabled, which means there's so many guides and video tutorials from myself and many other people going back like five plus years that have had the debug settings enabled by default when you load hen, which means anybody watching any of those videos from the past five years who are not really familiar with this are going to be, you know, in a, I'm going to get inundated by comments now about people saying, oh, the debug settings are no longer there in the settings. What do I do? So that's just, I know that's a me problem, not really a Sistro problem, but I would have appreciated it if he just left that as it was, having it enabled by default, because that has been the default behavior for years. And why change something that's been fine for five plus years? But, you know, I do like the fact that you can turn it off if you want to. I just don't think it should be off by default. I don't think that should be the default behavior. But I do like the fact that you can toggle it on and off. Plus, you can also enable this mini debug menu as well, which uh, gives you access to only part of the debug settings and not the full debug settings. Or, of course, you can enable the full debug settings as it was before, uh, whenever you normally loaded hen or gold hen and have access to the full debug settings on the system so yeah there you go so that's another option that's been added right there so next we have the cheat settings so we've got quite a few options added here in the cheat settings firstly you have the ability to turn the gold hen cheats off completely so i'm running dying light the following edition here and you can see that the cheat menu is not showing up when i hit options and even if i hold down the share button on the ps4 controller it's not loading up the cheats so the cheats have been completely disabled so that is an option if you never wanted the gold hen cheats if you never use cheats you can disable it completely but of course you can disable the cheat menu in the game options which keeps the cheats running so the cheats are still enabled but they just will not show up here in the game options however when you're in game you can still hold down the share button to bring up the gold hen cheats menu so that's an option if you don't like having the gold hen cheats menu in the game options but you still want to have access to it when you're in game then you can still do the long press of the share button to open it up right there. And of course, if you just press the share button once, it will load up the normal share. You have to hold down the share button to actually bring up the cheat menu. So that behavior still exists right there. And of course, if we head back into the cheat menu, we can, of course, enable the cheat menu in the options, and then it will come back here and you can access it this way as well. So you've got those options now added there into the cheat settings you also have the option to change the cheat menu combo so instead of holding down the share button to bring up the cheat menu while you're in game you can change it to a fast double press of the ps button so if i do that and then go back into the game if i just press the ps button once it will take me out to the home screen as normal but if i double tap it real quick then it will bring me to the cheat menu instead so if you prefer that instead of holding down the share button then that is another option. I do have one of my controllers with a jammed share button, so the share button doesn't work. I don't know if that's a common fault with the PS4 controllers or if it's just, you know, I got unlucky with one of my controllers where the share button's jammed. So, you know, if I was using that controller, it's nice to have the option to open up the menu using a double press of the PS button instead, so I can still use that feature. So that's pretty handy. And of course, you can turn it off completely as well so that, you know, if you don't want any way to access the cheat menu, in game then you'll have to come out and access it through the options menu instead so you have all those different options there for the cheat menu so anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the server settings now so again we have the ftp server that's pretty standard so you can run an ftp server on the ps4 uh, as before and also the bin loader server which allows you to of course inject payloads and load the payloads from gold hen itself using port 9090 uh, which is also still there so next we have the kernel log settings which i'm not entirely sure what this does uh, enable tty redirect shows user prints in k log it could give some lag in case of excess of logs so not 100 sure if this is just to kind of enable or disable the kernel log because the kernel log even with this disabled the kernel log still works over the network if you listen in on telnet using uh, port 3232 you can get the debug log from the console 
and it still seems to work even with this disabled and enabling this I haven't seen any changes so I'm not 100% sure maybe enabling this prints other information to the kernel log that it doesn't normally do not 100% sure on that but uh, yeah that's essentially what we have there in the settings of course the PS2 cheats were also added which essentially means that the gold hen cheat menu now supports PS2 games that are running on your PS4 as well so if you're running PS2 games uh, with the built-in emulator on the PS4, then you'll have access to the Gold Hen cheat menu just like you do here with PS4 games. And you can enable and disable your cheats for your PS2 games uh, using the Gold Hen cheat menu. So the last thing to mention that was also added is the Southbridge info. So if you head down to System and you go to System Information, you can see it now says Southbridge down there at the bottom. So Belize 2A00 0x40100. So there's different Southbridge versions. There's Belica, there's uh, Belize, there's um, Aeola or something. So yeah, the reason why you want to know this is that if you're running Linux on your PS4 or you're planning to run Linux on your PS4 is that there's different kernel versions of Linux that are tailored towards different Southbridges for the PS4. So of course, if you run a mismatched version, then you might get worse compatibility or Linux might not even load on your PS4 if you're using one that's meant for a different Southbridge. So knowing what Southbridge your PS4 is actually using is going to be very useful when it comes to running Linux on your PS4. So that way you can make sure that you get a Linux kernel that is built for that specific Southbridge rather than one that's made for another PS4 Southbridge that doesn't match yours. And then you run into more compatibility issues. So it's definitely useful to be able to know you know, just at a glance in the system settings what Southbridge your PS4 is running. In fact, if you've been watching my channel for a while, You'll probably remember that I've talked about the PS4 performance bug in Linux where whenever I run Linux on my PS4, on this PS4, I always get degraded performance no matter what kernel or version I run. I thought that was all PS4 Pros. All PS4 Pros have this issue. And it turns out it's only PS4 Pros, I think, that use this particular Southbridge, Belize 2, um, because I've seen people running on PS4 Pros with Linux who use Belica uh, Southbridges and they don't seem to have that performance bug. So there you go. So yeah, it's definitely useful to know what your Southbridge is for your PS4 if you're planning on running Linux. So the last thing is something that's actually been removed that was present in the beta versions of Gold Hen version 2.2.3, which was the ability to show the title ID labels on your games on your apps so all of your games and apps would actually show the title id of that game or app on the home screen on the menu and you could also have it display the game version as well so that you could just tell at a glance what the title id or game version is just like how the orbis toolbox also has the option to display title id labels it was basically a similar thing to that in the gold hen settings not quite sure why it's been removed i'm sure there's a valid reason why it was removed it was maybe causing some issues but you know, I would definitely like to see that feature return at some point in the future, maybe in a future version, because that was very useful. And Sistro was also working on an FPS counter, uh, which has not been included in this version. So again, hopefully that will be coming in a later version as well. So yeah, some very impressive features there added by Sistro here in the latest version of Gold Hen. I'll leave his donation link down in the video description if you want to support his work. And uh, yeah, there's a few things I'm not a huge fan of. Obviously, I would love to see the title ID labels uh, return here in this version. But again, there's probably a, a valid reason for why he removed them. And of course, I'm not a huge fan of the debug settings being disabled by default. But besides that, fantastic new features added there to this latest version of Gold Hen. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.